up, YouTube fam? It's your girl, Mrs. Tony Two Times, and I'm back with another video. In today's video, I'll be discussing the case of Sandra Kalalu, a Chicago woman who is accused of doing the unthinkable to her 69-year-old landlord who had recently served her with an eviction notice. Before we get into this video, welcome. If you're new here to our channel, please feel free to subscribe. Click that notification bell to get notified every time we upload. If you're rocking with the content, smash that like button. Share this video with everyone you know. Make sure you watch until the end to hear the full story. This is an open and active investigation. Everything said in this video is alleged. All right, let's jump right into it. On Monday, October 10th at around 5.50 p.m. in Chicago's north side, police were called for a missing person report to a Washtenaw Avenue boarding house in West Rogers Park, according to Chicago police. At the scene, tenants in the house told the responding officers they had not seen their landlord, 69-year-old Frances Walker, the entire day and were concerned for her safety. According to what tenants told police, they heard yelling and the sound of glass breaking coming from Frances Walker's unit at around 11 p.m. the evening before. The tenant said they believed that Miss Francis was arguing with one of the other tenants that lived at the boarding house, 36-year-old Sandra Kalalu. They also said they had heard screams, someone pacing, scratching noises, and furniture moving in the house around 2.30 a.m. Monday. According to reports, earlier that Sunday, or maybe even Saturday, Miss Francis had supposedly placed an eviction notice on Sandra's door. News reports say the eviction notice was preceded by a series of events that caused some of the other tenants to reportedly be afraid of Sandra Kalalu. According to reports, Sandra, who is originally from High Point, North Carolina, moved into the boarding house in July 2022. There were three or four tenants in the home that is divided into units. Two tenants lived on what police call the second floor, the others on the basement floor. And Sandra and Miss Francis reportedly lived on the first floor. Each unit has its own locked entrance. According to tenants and family of Miss Francis, she was admired in the community and opened up her home to women who needed a place to stay. Miss Francis really connected with the younger generation, although she did not have children of her own. She was loved in her church as well and played the piano at two churches in her neighborhood. She also played for a local ballet company and has been playing the piano there since 1978. It was one of her greatest joys to play for the ballet company every weekend. She spent time in her garden in front of her home and she also enjoyed spending time with her dog, who was also well known by neighbors and newcomers to West Rogers Park. Miss Frances was described as a very sweet and kind person. According to reports, Sandra had not been getting along with some of the other tenants after moving in. Sandra and the other tenants got into arguments. The issues even resulted in tenants and Miss Francis calling 911 a number of times complaining about Sandra leading up to the tragic event, according to police. However, Sandra still remained in the house and the conflict allegedly continued, prompting Miss Francis to change the locks on the basement unit on the Friday before she was reported missing by her tenants. It appears that Miss Francis was trying to take the necessary steps to help her other tenants feel safe, ultimately presenting Sandra with a notice to leave. 
Reports say that after hearing the commotion on the first floor, they sent Ms. Francis text messages asking if she was okay between 3.30 and 5.30 a.m. They feared that things may have escalated between Ms. Francis and Sandra during the alleged conversation the tenants overheard the night before. Some tenants received no response to the text messages and others received responses that were extremely unusual. According to reports, the messages said that Sandra would care for Miss Francis' dog and anyone who moves out going forward should give Sandra the keys. The tenants felt something was off and called the police. Officers showed up to the home a total of three times that day in an effort to get to the bottom of Miss Francis' whereabouts. It was later confirmed that Sandra Kalalu allegedly sent the text messages from Miss Francis's phone. According to reports, at one point while officers were at the home during the wellness check, they attempted to question Sandra Kalalu. But she declined by saying she knew her rights and she did not want to talk to police. According to what police and witnesses said, Sandra was walking out the home carrying a garbage bag heading towards a tow truck that had been waiting for her. However, Sandra would eventually agree that officers can search her room, but they had not found anything incriminating during the search. While the tow truck driver was allegedly waiting for Sandra, he said he decided to pass out his business cards, hoping to garner new business, not knowing what was going on at the home he was at. According to reports, Sandra was able to get into the tow truck with the trash bag and she and the tow truck driver allegedly headed for Foster Beach along Lake Michigan where her SUV was parked. According to what the tow truck driver told news reports, Sandra had allegedly put the garbage bag in a nearby trash can. He then hitched her SUV up and proceeded to take it to a mechanic. While riding with Sandra, according to the tow truck driver, he received a call from one of the tenants at Miss Francis' boarding house. The tenant allegedly called to warn him, speaking in Spanish, so Sandra won't be able to understand. The tow truck driver said they told him to be careful, the woman he's with may be dangerous, and to let them know if he sees anything suspicious. According to reports, the tow truck driver would tell them about the garbage bag that Sandra allegedly disposed of in the trash can near where they had picked up her SUV. The tenants and authorities would make their way to the location of the trash can. Reports say the tenants called the driver back and told him they did in fact recover what looked like blood-soaked rags and linens inside the garbage bag Sandra allegedly disposed of. A Cook County medical examiner would later confirm that was in fact the contents in the garbage bag. According to news reports, the tow truck driver said he felt a sinister presence in the truck with him as they rode around looking for a mechanic to fix Sandra's SUV. Officers had even tracked her down at one of the shops and tried to ask questions, but she allegedly dodged them once again. Reports go on to say that after going to a few different mechanics and getting turned down, the tow truck driver proposed parking her car near an intersection and giving her a ride home. However, reports say Sandra was not happy with that option and wanted to be taken somewhere else. According to the tow truck driver, when Sandra allegedly presented a credit card for payment, the name on the card read Francis Walker. He said at the moment, something felt like it shifted in the truck. He said he had the feeling that something bad would happen to him. The tow truck driver said officers called him and asked him to stall until they arrived. The tow truck driver believed that Sandra had noticed that they were being tailed by police officers and she allegedly became finicky.
As he was giving her the receipt and about to unhitch her SUV, Sandra allegedly began berating the tow truck driver because he would not do as she asked. The driver said that Sandra was approaching him with her hands in her pocket and getting very close. He told her to back up as he noticed her holding something with a red handle. According to reports, the stick that the driver used to assist in unloading the cars was what he used to allegedly fend Sandra off until he could get the attention of nearby police officers. Sandra Kalalu was arrested and taken into custody for allegedly pulling the knife on the tow truck driver. Police say they did find a pocket knife in her possession. According to reports, she was transported to the police station where she invoked her Fifth Amendment right. Back at the boarding house, officers had tried several times to make contact with Miss Frances Walker. They even tried to call out to her from her bedroom window, but got no response. Unlike the first search of Sandra Kalalu's room, police said they would find Miss Francis' cell phone as well as blood inside of the room. As officers searched the first floor, they made a grisly discovery. In the first floor's kitchen freezer, they found the severed remains of Frances Walker, her head, arms, and legs, according to police. According to reports, officers obtained a search warrant for the Washtenaw Avenue boarding house after finding the remains. As they further analyzed the home, investigators came across more blood in Miss Francis's room and blood on some knives in the home. Officers told news reporters that it appeared that the horrific act could have possibly been done with a large butcher knife. Officers would also reveal that they had not been able to locate the deceased torso. Some reports said that there's a possibility it may have been dumped into Lake Michigan, but that has not been confirmed by officials. Family members of Miss Francis said her dog had also lost his life in the heinous act. The family and community are distraught over the gut-wrenching findings. Residents and community members all expressed their remorse. Many wondered how something so terrible and vicious could happen to a kind and compassionate elderly lady. With what some would call incriminating evidence, Sandra Kalalu was subsequently charged with first-degree murder and concealment of a homicide in connection to Miss Frances Walker's passing. She also faced charges pertaining to the alleged confrontation with the tow truck driver. Sandra maintained her innocence when she was arrested and at her bond hearing as well last Thursday where she was denied bail. The assistant public defender assigned to Sandra called the state's case highly circumstantial, saying that there was no witness to the crime his client is accused of and that the test from the blood collected has not yet been completed. According to reports, while Sandra may have had a past criminal history, Sandra's ex-husband said that he is shocked at what she is being accused of and said he did not think she could be responsible for something so gruesome. Her attorney said that Sandra held steady employment and worked in customer service and marketing. She was also a home health care at some point, according to reports. Sandra is being held at the Cook County Jail. She is innocent until proven guilty. Wow fam, what a sad, disturbing, and scary story. Rest in peace to Miss Frances Walker. My condolences to her family and loved ones for their tragic loss. No one deserves to die in that way, especially such a selfless individual. My least favorite saying is no good deed goes unpunished. And sadly, this story is a perfect example of that philosophy. Again, my heart goes out to all involved in this terrible case. Fam, tell me your thoughts about this story in the comments below. 
Stories like this are a stark reminder that we live in a cruel and vicious world. You never know who a person is or what they are capable of, their demons or triggers. It's hard to sometimes swallow the pill that evil like this is allowed to happen to good people. But sadly, we live in a dark and falling world and being a light in a dark place can sometimes come at a deadly cost. Stay prayed up and stay safe, fam. All right, fam, that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is your girl, Mrs. Tony Two Times, and I'm out.